segment a little bit in the next, and then I'm going to reset and try to really take the hundreds of different data points and proof I have of this and present it. But it's very simple. The mega banks make most of their money in big government bailouts and through their control, the issuance of currency and credit. They go out and, especially with the socialist trained college students that are also financed by the big banks and indebted to them, they go out and tell them, rich people are the problem. Uh, we need to have a 60% tax rate in this country. And then you'll get lots of free goodies. And, of course, they never get the free goodies. We've watched this being done in third world country after third world country and now in first world countries. Uh, now in Europe, they don't even say it's for socialism. They say, we're cutting all your benefits and all the money's going to pay for derivatives that the banks created. And uh, Cameron, the British prime minister, is in the news today. That's coming up saying, I don't care if 85% or more of the British people want a referendum to get us out of the euro. We're staying in it. Uh, the headline is because I think we need to be in it. This is what we're talking about, a global financial dictatorship, a bank of the world that you pay carbon taxes to. And they've got Al Gore, Bill O'Reilly, Sean Hannity, uh, Herman Cain, all of them. Did I mentioned Glenn Beck, all of them promoting a VAT and sales tax right now, both of them, to quote, pay our debts, get out of debt. The 14 trillion is nothing. 27 plus trillion has been given to offshore banks. But the public is so ignorant, they don't understand this. Conservatives are ignorant, but when you get down to your, quote, average liberal, these aren't liberals at all. And they're running around saying, in fact, let's just play the Michael Moore before we go to him. They're running around, this is Luke Radowski last week talking to Michael Moore, and he says, the problem isn't the Federal Reserve, the problem is capitalism. We need to go after capitalism. Just this general, the tens of thousands of companies traded on the stock exchange, they're all evil. Anybody who's into free market, they're bad. This is what Warren Buffett and all of them put out. People that get banker bailout money, they want more tax money. It's called austerity in Europe, in Greece, here. Paid to them. It's so elementary. It's so elementary. Let's play the clip. Michael, what do you think about ending the Federal Reserve banking system, the private banking system? I think there's a larger issue. There's a larger issue to deal with. End the Fed. It's a private bank. End capitalism. That's the problem. The capitalism. Capitalism has to go. Capitalism has to go. Okay, folks, have you seen Soviet Russia? Have you seen Chinese uh, China, uh, communist Chinese China? Have you seen what the communists have done to the Chinese people? I mean, where it's a handful of generals and a few million inner party members that rule everybody, kill political dissidents and take their organs. Do you have any idea what collectivism's like? I mean, you have no freedom. And now, to, uh, notice now we're going into collectivism. The big banks are funding the carbon taxes. They're funding the fake environmental groups. They're funding the takeover and federalization of your local school, the federalization of your police, teaching you collectivism because if they can't get you in debt, they're just not going to let you have a, a business. They're going to raise the taxes so high to where only they can operate and they're exempt. This is bondage. And I'm going to go to Paul right now, but I want you to listen to me. This country, the, the bankers are trying to put us into communism, not just socialism. We're already pretty much socialist. Already more than half of the general public's money is paid in taxes and half the public uh, pays no federal taxes. We've already got 50 million people on food stamps. Our journey to slavery is already there. They're now shutting the economy off post-industrial world and taking a giant horde of welfare people and folks with government jobs who don't know why their paycheck doesn't buy them what, the, what it used to. They don't know about the Federal Reserve devaluing the dollar. They don't know about geopolitical movements. They don't know what austerity is. They don't know what banker dictatorship is. All they know is the mainstream media is telling them, vote for higher taxes, the rich people are exempt. Well, yeah, because the rich people wrote the rules, and they became rich by running government-controlled monopolies. And also have, we're going to break and come back to Watson. I also get these emails constantly saying, poor Alex doesn't understand that communism, socialism, and fascism are different things. Really? You mean in the last 110 years you've been taught this false political paradigm? 
I happen to have read Tragedy and Hope by Carol Quigley. I happen to have read Men in Power as a Political Retrospect by German Chancellor Elman Schmidt. I happen to have read hundreds and hundreds of publications and books written by them. And they openly, when they're communicating with each other, explain. They're into command and control, tyranny. I'm into liberty. That's the real polar opposite, not liberal and conservative. They always seek to create socialism and communism at the grassroots to get you dependent. Socialism leading into communism. While they are exempt and offshore and transfer your wealth to them. They're exempt. They're tax-free. Tax-free foundations. The ultra-rich always finance the communist. You are banker-run. Wall Street report yesterday afternoon. You saw the big, huge headline. Occupy Wall Street protesters call for re-election of Obama. And George Soros, uh, all the different organizations move on that he's given $5 million to. Uh, the Democratic Party uh, affiliated ad busters who are openly anti-free market. They all admittedly started this Occupy Wall Street. Now, you notice there's been four years of in-the-Fed demonstrations, and we get zero or close to zero media coverage. It doesn't matter if we have a 1,000 people at some of these rallies in front of the Federal Reserve. The Army in plain clothes gets called out on us. That's been leaked. Because we're actually protesting the inner group that controls the issuance of currency and credit, that created the derivatives, that overthrows nations all over the world, that's sucking the euro and, and the people of Europe into a admitted dictatorship, and Bloomberg and, and CNBC are saying it's good to have a financial dictatorship. Ireland, their central bank head said it's good to be, quote, ruled by foreign banks. And they've got Michael Moore at the Wall Street event. They've got Roseanne Barr, I've got her clip coming up, saying if, if the rich don't pay more taxes and give up their money, they're going to have their heads chopped off. Now, they don't mean the real ultra-rich like Warren Buffett and Bill Gates and the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers that are out there publicly funding all these groups. Or Warren Buffett, who's gotten hundreds of billions for his uh, Berkshire Hathaway subsidiaries, uh, what Bank of America he owns a big part of along with uh, Wells Fargo. No, they openly want austerity, that is tax increases, to, quote, pay off the derivatives debts that Bill O'Reilly and Sean Hannity... And Glenn Beck. I mean, I could play you the clips. We've written articles about it. I could play you the clips over and over again of Glenn Beck on with Bill O'Reilly. Bill O'Reilly saying, I think we need a national sales tax. And Glenn Beck's like, I agree with you, but I think we need both VAT and sales. They got Herman Cain, former head of the Federal Reserve at Kansas City, running around saying the Federal Reserve is your friend. And Ron Paul's a nut. Six mega banks have taken the country over. They've taken over our military. They've run up our bills. They're bankrupting us. And they publicly, 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 publicly fund a bunch. Of, and I've watched the speeches from L.A. to New York to Boston. At least the speeches the news is putting on. They're like, we want higher taxes and Obama to be elected. Well, sure enough, they're... Paul Watson joins us. Obama machine prepares to hijack Occupy Wall Street. Yeah, well, you don't really hijack something you kicked off. They know when there's about to be a rebellion. They know when folks are waking up. The Federal Reserve comes out last week and says they're surveilling all their opposition. They're watching all their opposition. They're tracking all their opposition. That's the real enemy, not capitalism, not the free market. It's big mega banks that are exempt from taxes and issue the currency and credit, that write the federal regulations and have their people in every power position who've stolen $27 trillion in bailout money. And we've got all these college students who can't get jobs, can't pay off their college. Globalism, NAFTA, GATT has destroyed them, that both parties push through to move everything to China. And we're going to a Chinese model where it's socialism and communism mixed together at the bottom, where we're all dependent on the state and they've got bureaucrats over us. And then the elites sit back and are above the law. Where General Electric can operate its power plants, but nobody else can. Where if you're a donor to the inner party, you can keep your GM dealership, but if you aren't, you can't. Or you can get tens of billions of dollars in green energy credits and never even build a thing. And openly dance around and say it's a post-industrial America. Ha, ha, ha. 
if you're not part of the club, you're not operating a business. This is mafia government. And they've got a bunch of well-meaning, surly college kids who make me want to throw up with their ignorance. But so do the mainline Republicans running around telling me how Rush Limbaugh and Glenn Beck are going to save them. You know, Paul's written a lot of articles on this. I've played the clips. I could play you probably an hour straight at Glenn Beck and, and others promoting uh, uh, sales taxes and VAT to pay off what this country owes. We don't owe this stinking money. We're an engine of success. Our supposed debt the bankers have manipulated us into is $14 trillion. We gave the stinking bankers 16.6 secret and another 11 or so that they want that uh, that's public. 27 and I went 27 trillion. We haven't gotten numbers in 2 years. And these idiots are in the street saying get the rich people. The ultra mega world rulers literally have your tax money paid to them, you idiot. They hold the whole world hostage. They've screwed everything over. They're working with collectivists in China and everywhere else. And you're sitting there saying put more cyanide in the water. All right, I'm going to go to Paul Watson who's broken this down. But I'll tell you this. They're bringing a mixture of communist socialist system to America backed up with a police state grid. Conservatives will give up their rights in the name of fighting terror. Liberals will give it up in the name of socialism. And that's what the CFR head wrote years ago. Paul, you ought to republish that stuff where, where uh, Richard N. Haas talks about it. They got it all figured out. And right when they know we're waking up to Wall Street and the incredible inequity, they say, Wall Street says, okay, raise taxes on us. They have all these rich guys go, I'm exempt from taxes. That's not right. Well, you know what? I'm not exempt from taxes. You make $125,000 a year. When you talk about all the, all the different uh, write-offs they've gotten rid of, it's 45%, Bubba Jack, that I pay. That's not counting all the other taxes. Trying to run this operation. And anybody who's had a business knows that, except the globalists who are exempt. Now, I'm going to go to Paul Watson now to break this down. Paul, I took two weeks to analyze this, to watch it. I knew Soros was involved, but I still knew in the Fed was trying to get in there. We were trying to point out the real problem. I've confirmed now that anybody talking about liberty or wearing an Obama Joker shirt is told, hit the, hit the door, hit the bricks, buddy, hit the street. Uh, they're now chop rich people's heads off. Uh, in capitalism, there is no doubt this is banker-financed French Revolution. This is not 1776. This is the opposite, my friend. And we, and that's why I'm making the big announcement, and if, folks, if you want to beat the communists that are banker-run, you better go to every Federal Reserve station this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And don't wait for orders from headquarters. The end the Fed up in Dallas, great people. Just be there 6 o'clock Friday. In the Fed, Houston, be there in Houston, high noon, Saturday. 10 a.m. Sunday at the Federal Reserve in San Antonio. Or have it whenever you want. Just be there. I'll promote it. Email us the events. We need nationwide to get call the media, local media. Make them cover it. Talk radio. This is who's doing it. This is who's cheating us. This is who teams up with the government. This is the problem. Paul Watson, I'm telling you, it, it really hit me. This is it. But when it really happens, you're, you're dumbfounded for a moment. This is the bankers trying to trigger like judo and use all the anger we're throwing at them and turn it around and bring in total collectivism to fully wipe out their competition and fully get us dependent. I mean, they're making their big move, worldwide revolution. The mainstream horror media is calling this uh, uh, American revolution. They're dubbing it, saying it's great. That's your big telltale sign while demonizing in the Fed and sickening Secret police on us. Well, I mean, it's on, Watson. It's on. Well, Alex, the big dirty secret behind this Occupy Wall Street event, which is not to say that there are a lot of well-meaning people involved in it, but once again, they've been conned, is the fact that the Occupy Wall Street tax proposal, the one that they're all out in the street advocating, is backed by Wall Street itself. You can go on the Occupy Wall Street official website, what they're calling the official website, and one of their demands is for the Obama administration through Congress to, quote, pass the Buffett rule on fair taxation so the rich pay their fair share. And that demand is posted on their own website. The only problem with that is the Buffett tax rule is the one that the Obama administration itself bought and paid for by Wall Street 2008 Obama campaign 
Goldman Sachs, over a million dollars donation. JP Morgan, over $800,000. Again, in 2012, Obama's campaign is even more reliant on Wall Street funding. Of course, his entire cabinet is made up largely of people who made their living, made their reputation on the back of Wall Street. The Obama administration completely Wall Street owned. And what do we read out of Bloomberg News just a couple of days ago? Quote, no differences exist between the Obama administration and billionaire investor Warren Buffett on the principles of a White House tax proposal that bears his name. Jay Carney, President Barack Obama's spokesman, told Bloomberg just a couple of days ago. So we've got this so-called fair tax proposal being promoted by Warren Buffett and the Obama administration, which is completely bought and paid for by Wall Street. So why is it also being advocated by so-called anti-Wall Street protesters? Well, that's the incredible brazenness of the chutzpah or uh, just the bravada, the, the hubris, where the mega banks, the same ones that have hijacked the U.S., are openly in Europe saying democracy's wrong in Germany. We're going to get rid of even more of the pension funds that the Germans have been forced to pay into. We're going to slash the so social safety net which they paid into socialism. They took their money and it's got to all go to the bankers to quote, prop up the too big to fail. You've got to pull up the, the BBC. Remember six months ago, uh, uh, Paul, where it was a uh, he headline head of Irish central bank says it's good. Ireland now run by foreign banks. And they went overnight from being the fastest growing, best positioned, lowest debt to just, Oh, you signed on to the Euro. You're bankrupt. Now you just signed on to our derivatives. I mean, is Iceland is the only country to effectively beat it. So far, and the fight's still on, I saw in the news today, the Icelanders figured it out and said, this debt isn't ours, and forced an audit and found out that 92% wasn't their debt. And they said, go ahead and sue us, British uh, Crown. Go ahead and sue us, Bank of England. Go ahead and sue us, EU. Your bankers owe this money. We're going to arrest the banker heads, the finance minister, and the finance minister left the country. It's same thing, 90 plus percent. Of the Irish, the money's not owed by them or the government. 90 plus percent here, 90 plus percent. It's the same actuary. And it's so naked that they're on. I mean, when you see ABC News, Time Magazine, Newsweek, Warren Buffett on every channel every week saying it's not right that I don't pay any taxes. We need to pass my rule that raises it on people making 125000 a year. And then these hippies send me emails going, if you think middle class is $125,000, you are crazy. We do need to take their money. You idiots. You could take all the domestic rich people's money in the U.S. It would amount to $2 trillion. It wouldn't run the country for one stinking year. And then all the wealth's gone. The people that come to your hotels, that go to your restaurants, that go to your golf courses, that 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 get their nails done. Uh, I mean, you don't understand the globalists do. They want a post-industrial, post-consumerist world. Is the consumer thing wrong? Did it, has it gone too far? Yeah, but that's not freedom. That's just people getting decadent on the cheap credit of the beginning of the Ponzi scheme 12 years ago. When they sucked us into it and the globalists using Madison Avenue to get us to sell out for baubles. But then it isn't like communism is some new wonderful thing. We need to get back to self-sufficiency, local sustainability, true free market, true decision making. And you notice under Obama raiding the Amish, raiding people selling tomatoes, raiding people with gardens. It's on. Agenda 21, global corporate domination, shutting down farms and ranches. I mean, Paul, the magnitude, and I'm an idiot. You know, two weeks ago, I knew Soros was involved. I went and looked it up. I watched the groups leading it with their Democrat mindless chants, uh, the vapid eyes, like, it's time to take the money from the rich, behead them, the one percenters. I knew, but I knew in the Fed was there trying to vie and, hey, it's the Federal Reserve. It's not capitalism that's bad. But you watch CNN, MSNBC, Paul, it's all capitalism did this, capitalism did this, capitalism. No, we got away from capitalism more and more in 1913. We have a mega private central bank running things. It's in control. It's robbing and looting everything openly. 
I mean, the Federal Reserve, what, what six months ago came out and said, the CFR came out and recommended a, a VAT and a sales tax and a carbon tax to pay our debt to them. And then they got a gaggle of idiots in the streets, and then they send me emails lecturing me how I work for Wall Street. I don't own one stinking stock. I don't have any Wall Street sponsors. I'm 100% sponsored by my listeners. I'm against tyranny. I'm against unfair monopoly groups, mafias running our world, and you stupid, stupid so-called liberals make me want to throw up your, your insane ignorance, and you moron mainline Republicans. You make me want to vomit on you as well. When all of your chief whores, all of them, every stinking one of them is pushing new taxes to pay off what we owe. And I'm sorry, Paul, but you've got all the links in your articles where the whole thing is Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, Bill Gates' dad is in this 1% movie, a film by Jamie Johnson, where the rich kid comes out against the corruption of the elite, and he blames free market for it. No, most of these families made their money in sweetheart deals with government contracts with my tax money. This isn't some defector from the ultra-rich. This is a top-level ultra-rich person t t doing what granddaddy did, learning how to con the general public into, 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 into going into the rat's nest, thinking they're getting out of it. Go ahead, Paul. Here's a quote, Alex, from the Wall Street Journal. Quote, roughly 90% of the tax filers who would pay more under Mr. Obama's plan, this is the plan being advocated by Occupy Wall Street and Warren Buffett, on millionaires and 99.99% on billionaires. So again, it's the middle class. It's not Warren Buffett or Wall Street corporations that are going to be hurt most by this Occupy Wall Street solution that they're calling for. Uh, Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway still owes taxes from 10 years ago. You know, he's the ultimate Wall Street insider, third richest man on the planet. Buffett and most of the top corporations pay virtually no income tax, not because of some law that hasn't passed that's going to decimate the middle class, but because they park their wealth in offshore tax havens. That's why they get to avoid the income tax. So all this crap about 1% is absolute nonsense. This is going to decimate the middle class. And that's why His own Wells Fargo caught laundering $376 billion in narcotics money in two years alone. They paid a $111 million, $111 million fine on it. That was something like 0.3%. It's like you rob a bank, you pay a $3,000 fine. It is completely asinine. And Paul, we are going up against the Federal Reserve. We're actually going up against a group who came out last week and said they're surveilling the American people. We're actually going up against a group that is completely ruthless and actually hijacked this nation and killed Kennedy when he tried to stop them. If people want to go out to the real corporate fascists, the monopoly men, this is it, Paul. This is it. And uh, we're going straight into the belly of the beast, and it's time to have an Occupy the Federal Reserve. What do you think of that? Well, we're not just cynically dismissing all the Occupy Wall Street people and saying, oh, let's just do nothing. We're offering a real alternative solution that actually targets the focus of the problem. I mean, we had people back in August with the London riots saying we were bad for not supporting a group of thugs, you know, stealing trainers from J.D. Sports. And that's meant to what make protesters to look bad. Stay there. Absolutely. The global bankers are hijacking a movement against the bankers through their normal suspects, a bunch of well-meaning commies. If you want to put a Tobin tax on the big mega brokerage firms and the Federal Reserve, I'd all be for it to pay off the debt. Of course, you just be paying the money right back to them. It's fraudulent. you got to write it off. And, and I want to be clear. There are a lot of good people in this Occupy Wall Street movement. But the, the move on, George Soros, they all admit they're trying to hijack it because they know they've got to lead the opposition. George Soros gets banker bailout money. He brags about having a great crisis. Europe is going under serious austerity. I'm not one of these fake right wingers that supports the banksters saying cut everybody's pensions and things that you've paid into to pay the bankers. See, the mainline Republicans are saying that with austerity. They get one half and the Democrats call in and say raise taxes on the middle class. And in between them, what is it? Jack Spratt could eat no uh, fat and his wife could eat no lean. So between the two of them, they lick the platter clean. That's how this dialectic works. Take Roseanne Barr. I've read about her. I know she's involved in a lot of good causes. 
Not a bad person. I was planning to play a clip of her. Uh, I know Max Kaiser had her on. And I understand what she's saying. Either the rich start paying some more taxes or they get their heads chopped off. But are you talking about the guy that makes a million bucks a year and has 300 employees down the road at the cement factory or whatever that he started when he was 25 years old with one truck? I happen to know a guy like that. And literally worked his fingers to the bone, doesn't even have fingerprints because the lime ate him off. Talking about that guy with hundreds of employees? Or are you talking about Warren Buffett? who got banker bailout money. By the way, there are demonstrations against Bank of America, against the corrupt mortgages. Now that's, I support that. So I need to be clear. There's a lot of good stuff happening here. And when Bank of America takes people's houses that are paid for, they don't even have a deed to, like in Florida, they do deserve to go to prison. But I don't want to start talking about cutting heads off. But I understand where Roseanne Barr is going with this. But the elite want to cut the middle class's head off instead of actually they're going to throw the system to the wolves because they want to get rid of what's left of the free market. Paul, you've got the floor in the last few minutes of this, the next five minutes. And we're going to get a report from Rob Jacobson there on the streets uh, in New York. I flew him up there uh, with another reporter here out of our office. And then we also have uh, Darren McBreen's going to be down there covering the Occupy Austin at the city council. That'll all be staged. Uh, with their people down there this Thursday, and we've also got other reporters. Uh, and, I, and I'm and i going to Dallas and Houston and San Antonio. Uh, but uh, you finish up in the ne next few minutes. You've got so many quotes, so much proof, and I'm just so tired of seeing well-meaning people getting conned by this, uh, Paul. Well, I mean, the words that John Lennon sung when he said in the song Revolution, you know, you say you want a revolution, but then you go carrying pictures of Chairman Mao. Well, if you listen to some of the interviews, and we're not saying this is all the people, but it's it's definitely a significant portion. You go watch the Kakesh interview that was posted in the article yesterday, and you look at some of the signs these people are carrying, the red flags, the communist motifs, then alarm bells start ringing because they talk about using the state to violently enforce their belief system, which if you read the Occupy Wall Street website, is the Obama agenda. That's why in these interviews they want to uh, re-elect Obama, who is the ultimate Wall Street puppet. They openly advocate his tax agenda, as we've just talked about. And then you look at who is actually coming in to steer the protest, and it's MoveOn.org, which is a Democratic Party front, massive backer of Obama, bankrolled his 2008 campaign, fully behind him in 2012. And of course, that campaign was funded by J.P. Morgan Chase and Goldman Sachs. His entire cabinet is full of Wall Street operative, Lawrence Summers, Caldera, Michael Froman. So why is a group that helped get Wall Street insiders to power now announcing its involvement in anti-Wall Street protesters? It doesn't make any sense whatsoever unless these protests are being manipulated. Stay there. We're going to come back with a more intel from Paul Watson. It's simple. They implode America. Poses the saviors and then fully destroy. How do we reach out to these well-meaning people who really think communism and socialism is a good thing? My God, it killed a couple hundred million people last century. <laughs> the total humiliation. A bunch of government party members living in palaces while everything we've worked for gets stolen from us. And it's always big banks funding it. My God, they're trying it here. We've got to defeat these globalists. I mean, we've got to get them out of power and punish them because they're not going to stop. You think I want to go up? And protest the Fed? You think I like it? You notice I don't go out in public a lot because I, I like just electronically working, getting the word out. You think I like going up against the Federal Reserve? But it's a dark, misty staircase. I've got to go up into the room with the, with the Cyclops, folks. I've got to go up. So I've got to follow this path because every time I look at my children and look at anybody else's children, I realize they've got to have people to defend them. They got to have people that'll do the research. They've got to have strong minds that aren't weak minded. And as men, we've got to step up. But we are fighting pure, unmitigated, deceptive evil. You think the bankers are just going to come in and steal everything and then just sit there? No, they're going to come in and run the opposition and go, I know how to defeat the bankers, raise taxes on the general public and pay it to us who are exempt. And then they publicly run it. And then I publicly can't get the little hippies to wake up. I can't get the Glenn Beck people or Rush Limbaugh people to wake up either. They just love being conned. Limbaugh just says all of Wall Street's perfect. Bailouts are wonderful. Same thing with Glenn Beck. 
No, that's wrong. That's communism for them. It's stealing. All you so-called conservatives that won't wake up, you're going to allow this to come down in America. They're going to kill a bunch of us, man. They're going to steal everything. You better get aware of that. These people, this, this is a red terror the globalists want in this country. They want to knock out America. They want death camps. They've been setting it up with Homeland Security. They want to bring in a hot terror, a red terror in this country. And then they'll knock the commies out after they're done killing you know, 50 million people and then put in some new fascist system. Commies are used to exterminate and relay the land. Then they bring in the corporate reform after with the public that's learned, you know, how to behave. Paul Watson, finish up. I'm sorry I'm ranting here. Well, I mean, you played the clip earlier, Alex, of Michael Moore, you know, saying the Fed's irrelevant and all the Occupy Wall Street people cheer him. Why are the ideologues of this movement people like Michael Moore? This is a, a multi-millionaire who poses as this working class hero, you know, a big fat slug who tells everyone he's else. Worth he's worth hundreds of millions. And now he's trying to control the narrative of this. Occupy Wall Street movement by claiming it's about, quote, ending capitalism. Look, the guy's CIA. You can take one look at but him. He's, he's Ford Foundation jacked up. He is a slug who knows full well what he's doing. The man is a traitor. But, I mean, he seems to be enjoying capitalism quite a bit. He owns several million-dollar beach houses, charges $50,000 to give speeches, has hissy fits when he's not treated like royalty, and then puts on this fake public persona of being the down-to-earth man of the people. And they all cheer him for it, and I'm just not buying it. I'm tired of being a soccer. And, I mean, we called it with the Arab Spring. We said that the situation in Egypt was being manipulated. You know, a year later, the people in Egypt have got virtually no freedoms. It led to the Libya situation where they were called protesters and it gave the green light for the NATO bombardment. Uh, we were proven right about that. Stay there. I'm going to give you two, three minutes on the other side to finish re recapping that we were right again. Oh, yeah, that's how it works. They, they turn rebels loose or protesters. They say this is the rightful government. And that's what our media is doing. They're saying this, this Occupy Wall Street, they're right, raise taxes. The people have spoken. America, you wanted higher taxes paid to foreign banks. And the hippies will all skip along. We won, we won. You people make me sick. Bunch of warmongers. Rob Jacobson on to pop in later. Uh, some new Federal Reserve funded Occupy Wall Street. Demonstrations are going on in New York. Rob is from New York, from Brooklyn. So we have uh, dispatched him out there. He's scheduled to be popping in uh, soon with us. Also, we got a call from Sean Stone, of course, TV and documentary filmmaker, son of Oliver Stone. He's down there. We're going to be interviewing him. We have some big surprise guests that looks like will be popping in on the transmission tomorrow. Uh, if you just joined us, we're finishing up with Paul Joseph Watson right now. And, and, and Paul, recap the continuum of all this. You've got a guy worth $200 million dollars. Uh, campaigns for Obama. Obama is the most pure Wall Street candidate we've ever seen. McCain was horrible, but the point is Obama was their man. His whole thing is run by the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve is absorbing most of Wall Street that isn't part of the insider club. The SEC shuts down all of their competition. They are above the law. They can launder all the drug money they want, the big six banks. Warren Buffett gets caught laundering uh, $376 billion, Bloomberg reported, gets in no trouble. And then, and then, and then l lectures us on every news program I turn on without even looking. And I watch very little TV. He must be on every day. Every time I'm in a hotel room, in a restaurant, listening to the news, it's him lecturing how the rich pay basically no taxes. And they advertise GE pays no taxes. They run the President's Economic Council because they wrote the stinking rules they're exempt. If some guy worth $5 million, you see it in the news, tries to go do one of those tax shelters, he gets arrested even though it's not illegal. Just like they have checkpoints all over the country looking for drugs, but the but the ATF allows the Sinaloa cartel to bring in, it was something like hundreds of tons over five years. <clears throat> it's to shut down their competition. And, and, and the spectacle that I've seen on the news, which the media is giving the attention to, they're giving almost no attention to people occupying Bank of America pointing out they take houses where they don't have the mortgage on or that it's all fraudulent. That's good. Uh, no, they ignore all the in the Fed protests going on for four years and that are currently going on in Denver. I found out they're going on in Denver. They're going on in Boston, but it's only on local news things or on local news sites or on YouTube. It's nowhere in the mainstream media. Now, again, why? 
Why? Why? Because we're protesting the real power structure. <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to get Aaron Dykes today to get a report out on Infowars.com, a proper press release. We need to get out to all the activists. I'm going to be in Dallas this Friday night, 6 o'clock. I'll do two hours of the show. I'll have Aaron sit in the third hour and do the nightly news that night. I'm going to get on the bus with Rob Dew and others. I'm going to drive up to Dallas. I'm going to give a speech at the Federal Reserve Building there where in 2008, about 300, 400 people showed up. I want to get the local and the Fed to come out. Please, all of you. Then I'm driving down to Houston at the uh, Federal Reserve Building in Houston. We'll post all the addresses and all that. That'll be high noon till 2 o'clock, noon to 2. I want to see everybody down there. And then I'm going to get in the bus and I'm going to drive down in San Antonio, 10 to 11.30 a.m. Because we got to get back to, for the Sunday show. Uh, at the Federal Reserve Building there. We're going to go directly to the private bankers that are so powerful, they pose as the government, and the government's in debt to them through fraud. We're going directly to the crony monopoly men. They're not even crony capitalists. That, that term's not even proper. These are, it has nothing to do with capitalism. It's a mafia that's exempt and controls the issuance of currency and credit that now finances through George Soros and Warren Buffett groups running around calling to raise taxes, VAT sales taxes on everybody to pay, quote, off the debt to the bankers. We've got to get this out to the public. A lot of people are awake. Drudge Report yesterday, the biggest link you can have on the Internet. We're going to show this later. We have a screenshot of it. The biggest link you can have on the Internet is the big giant top banner, you know, all the way across the page. There it is. Protesters call for re-election of Obama. Drudge Report. That was last night until about 7 a.m. this morning. Uh, I asked my web guys. We got about a million extra visitors. Not, not hits. A million extra visitors off that. It's now moved down to the third story in the middle column. And, 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 and that's a big deal because that article exposes the left-right paradigm, the whole deal, how it works. It's got updates on it. Occupy Wall Street tax proposal is backed by Wall Street itself. Make sure you add that as an update number two, Paul, to your article. Aren't you glad I called you Sunday morning and said you got to get the article out? you got to send it to Drudge. I called Paul at 7 a.m. Sunday morning. And uh, he, he got on it. He got it done. And that is the biggest thing in the Internet you can get is the mega supreme Godzilla link. Thank you, Drudge, for being a true patriot and helping us fight the globalist and shattering the left right paradigm. Because Drudge knows we have no future if we don't do this. Paul, I'm going to go to uh, Jacobson, who's on the ground in New York. You've got a few minutes. Recap what we're facing here. Well, if you read that article that was on Drudge. Um, it points out how currently the narrative is being steered by these big leftist foundations who are in bed with Wall Street. For example, I mean, there's, there's a sign that somebody's carrying around there it says, quote, a government is an entity which holds the monopolistic right to initiate force. Now, does that sound like a grassroots bottom up revolution or does it sound like top down tyranny? That's the kind of narrative that's now being created. And move on dot org, the big foundation that backs finances Obama, the Wall Street puppet, has now announced its intention to completely steer and hijack these protests starting this week. So that's what your Fed and the Fed protest is all about. It's about taking back the narrative and steering it towards protesting the real financial terrorists, like, as you mentioned, with the banks, the mortgages, and of course, the Federal Reserve. So that's what it's all about. It's not about people like Michael Moore and ending capitalism. That's a diversion. That's only going to inspire slave the middle class to a greater degree and as my article documents Buffett, Bill Gates, all these top corporations that pay virtually no tax all their wealth is offshore they will not be subject to this so called fair tax rule that these Occupy Wall Street activists are trying to get through It apply 90% of the people who will have to go through it are not even millionaires they're just middle class business owners and people who are trying to make a living that's who's going to get hit by this Paul, you live in England. Tell folks what percentage, in, with all the taxes added, uh, you pay. The VAT was 17.5% value-added tax. That goes on to almost every purchase. It went up to 20% a few years ago. So you pay 20% extra uh, in petrol, everything basically aside from clothing. You pay it on food. Um, and, of course, the income tax, which in Europe is some of the highest ever, the income tax in the, at the moment in Britain is... 50% for everything you earn over, I believe it's um, £60,000. So 
you're going to get, you're not going to get a sales tax and then they're going to remove the income tax. You're going to get both. That's exactly what happened in Europe. And then they're just going to keep increasing it after that. And so I told folks for 15 years that was coming. And now I have to hear Bortz and others backpedaling as Herman Cain supports all three taxes. <laughs> I tell you, there's no end to their evil. And it's, again, it's just about trying to get through to these leftists who's controlling their message because moveon.org supports Obama, who is a creature of Wall Street. His entire cabinet is Wall Street. His 2012 campaign is Wall Street. So why are they backing his re-election? It makes no sense unless they've been completely subverted uh, and deluded by these big foundations that are in bed with Wall Street and are part of the global elite. And it all goes back to Brzezinski, to Bloomberg saying, they knew in advance that riots were coming and they had to control them because there was a global political awakening going on. If you want to look at a real genuine revolution, look at Greece. You know, they've been in revolt for nearly two years. They know the enemy. They're stopping the IMF World Bank vultures from entering their public buildings. They're not talking about re-electing the very same people who were in league with the vultures, which is what... No, they're talking about doing. basically politically stringing up Papandreou. They're, 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 they're literally beating up and egging and dragging out out bankers anywhere they're found, uh, IMF World Bank vultures, not their corner bank. They're not going to a local resort owned by a Greek who employs 500 people and beating him up. They're going after the insiders. So, yeah, it's just about having a little, being able to hold more than one thought in your head at one time and realizing that, you know, the so-called Arab Spring was manipulated from the beginning. The London riots, that was called the, the onset of a new revolution. We dismissed that at the time. We said it was it was basically a flash mob riot. Again, we were proven right with that. And with this, when it's being pushed by the very interests who are in bed with Wall Street, it's not anti-Wall Street. So the, these leftists really need to get that through their heads and join the activists who are already chanting end the Fed and well, protesting Paul, against the banks. Well, the Wall Street is an incredibly diverse tens of thousands of companies. It's six big mega banks. You talk to a regular trader, even at a prominent company that's not insider, they'll tell you the insiders are using regulators to shut them down. This general thing of capitalism and Wall Street and any company that has stocks and bonds is, is, is automatically bad. This is pure baloney. You know, many cities, public works and things are traded as bonds and things on Wall Street. You know, people's pension funds. This is baloney. This is the bankers, the inner group using the crisis to take out the local regional banks and, and other companies. It's all about monopoly. And I've got some good news uh, to, from Rob Jacobson, who is with us. He's saying it is a hoax. The main in the... In, uh, uh, Occupy Wall Street people are in the fetters. They know what's going on, but the media is giving attention to the dumbed down commie type folks. We're going to come back and talk to Rob Jacobson, who's been there all day on the streets, talking to people. He's been there for the next few days, reporting from down there. We've also got Luke Radowski set to pop in in the next few days, uh, doing a great job as well, reporting uh, for InfoWars.com. And we're going to be uh, exposing the real Fed here. But I cannot stress enough. It's the Federal Reserve running this whole thing, the Agenda 21, the NAFTA, the GAF, the police state. It's all run by them. They run the country. They've hijacked it. They're the ones. They're the enemy. They're the New World Order. Listen to Ron Paul. They're the people. By the way, I've heard KRS-One. Uh, we got contacted, probably coming back on the show. He's doing a nationwide tour for Ron Paul. He saw, you know, as a great black icon rapper that Obama was fake before the election had even happened. He knows Ron Paul. Man, come on. The whole system's after Ron Paul. That's obvious. He's the man. The whole spectrum is after him. Paul Watson, great job. Keep hitting him hard. Rob Jacobson coming up. On the other side, stay wound up. And it's because the Federal Reserve is running this operation. And they announced last week, we knew two weeks before, that they're spying on the American people and those that criticize them. They're making a list of them. Well, good. Put my John Hancock up at the top. These people want to shut down our farms and ranches, everything. They want total control. They've set up NAFTA and GATT to shut us down. They write white papers about a post-industrial America. This isn't some boss hog good old boy over us. These are wicked people. And they cannot stand us identifying them. They've got the Republicans and Democrats bought. They don't have you and I bought. They don't have Ron Paul bought.
What they've done is so outrageous, and it's outrageous that they're trying to take over the demonstrations. Now, he's down there, and this is what I saw two weeks ago. I knew they were there, the George Soros move on people. And I knew they'd originally called for the date, knowing that people that were against the banks were coming out. But but uh, Jacobs is down there so far today interviewing folks, and they are not communist calling for all this. So that means that the mainstream media is only interviewing the people they want, putting out that one message as if communism is the way you beat the bankers when they're actually the author of it. Uh, let's go ahead and get uh, his take on that. Rob Jacobson, tell us what's happening there in Manhattan. Yeah, I'm over here uh, in Liberty Square. And we interviewed a bunch of people, and it's true. Not many people mentioned the communist solution or anything like that. A lot of people gave me mostly quizzical answers. They're here for a, to be part of the occupation, spiritual movement. We did ask uh, somebody here who's giving out food where the food is coming from. And she mentioned that it's coming from, uh, besides donations, also groups that have come together to donate to them. So we're going to get to the bottom of that and find out the names of those groups specifically to see who exactly is donating food to the occupation. But most of the people here seem to just be here to experience uh, a protest scenario, a community scenario. I asked one gentleman who traveled a far distance about what his opinion on what the Federal Reserve's relationship with this uh, protest is. He wasn't sure. And uh, that's basically the sentiment that I'm getting from most of the protesters out here so far. All right. Now, I know there's more protests coming up today. You're going to be popping in over the next few days with us. Um, break down uh, some of the places uh, you're going to be going today. Well, we'll be following the protests as they take off. Everybody's still assembling right now. We're going to see where they're going to go. I happen to know on Wednesday it's been reported that uh, unions are organizing to come down here. So that should be pretty interesting. See what uh, they have to say. Well, we know they want to go thank Obama for shipping their jobs overseas, and they want to call for higher taxes uh, to get rid of the middle class so nobody can afford to hire their janitorial services. I mean, that's basically the move. Uh, yeah, they, in fact, what do you think of the fact that they have announced the White House has admitted, move on, has admitted they, quote, are going to take over the movement? Well, they, they're the ones that called it, so I guess they let grassroots then show up, and then they come and claim that it's their movement. I think it's just more or less par for the course. It seems to be the same game they always play. They wait for a grassroots movement to show up. They anticipate co-opting them, and then they do it. And I feel that that's what's going on here. There's a lot of legitimate people here who uh, do want to see legitimate change, and, uh, but they're not sure where to begin or where to look. And I feel that their intentions are going to be co-opted again. And I feel we're going to see a heavy presence of the co-opters on Wednesday. Well, that's right. Right now, they're just selectively showing clips of the demonstrations that have taken place and showing different move-on groups leading demonstrations. The media is like, here's our wonderful little revolutionaries. Let's hear what they're calling for. You were the one that pointed out to me this morning that Al Gore had called for an Arab Spring a month ago. Uh, boy, that's Mr. Anti-Establishment. And then also the film The 1% by Jamie Johnson with Bill mm -hmm. Gates Sr. in it calling for total socialism. And here's the Wall yeah. Street Journal and New York Times endorsing it. I mean, the bankers love, like insurance companies, writing up socialist health care as a way to make more of us buy their product. I mean, they really know how to do it, don't they? Exactly. They write the laws, they write the rules, and then uh, they uh, write the loopholes and leave themselves out. And I believe that that was the message that was being uh, given by uh, Bill Gates Sr. in that movie. And I think it's the same thing reverberating over and over again in the headlines. What we see right now is, you know... They blame, hey, let's tax the rich in general, but what they fail to uh, say is that they're going to leave themselves out and really tax people who legitimately uh, are entrepreneurs and real capitalists, people who climbed the ladder and successfully made products for themselves, names for themselves. Let's tax them and not tax the people who uh, own these offshore banks, who write the rules. It's That's right. These elite, the, these elite hereditary families who have been tax-free since 1906 are uh, sitting here lecturing us when they're a bunch of eugenicists. We're going to check in more with you later. I want to say bye to you during the break.